bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Just begin to praise and worship the name of the Lord. Invite the Lord, Father to come and take absolute control. Invite the Holy Spirit to come and saturate the atmosphere with His presence and His power. Invite the, the Holy Spirit to take dominion over everything that we're going to do this evening, oh God. We pray, oh God, we invite you, Lord Jesus. May you take your have your own way, oh God. May you take control over everything that we're going to do this evening. We pray, oh God, we invite your presence. Nothing can be done without your presence, oh God. We pray that you have control over everything we do today, oh God. We invite that you take absolute control, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We invite that you take absolute control, oh God, over everything we do this evening. We ask that you saturate the breath, this place with your power and your presence and your dominion. Have your own way, Lord Jesus. It is all for your glory. It is all for your glory. It is all for your glory. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We give you all.
is the senior pastor of Christ Covenant Chapel located in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. He is also the president of Covenant Connections Ministries, an organization with an ultimate goal to raise people from all walks of life and cultural backgrounds to step out of their comfort zone to become agents of change. With his life-transforming messages, Pastor King ministers his trademark messages of developing people to positively impact their generation through the gospel all over the world, combining humor, unfettered passion, compassion, and real-life experiences with Bible-based teachings. His restorative, motivating, and inspiring messages challenge his audience to become what they were born to be transcend denominational and cultural barriers. He is gifted and a much sought-after motivational speaker, both in the United States and globally. He truly lives by his mantra, that states, we live by faith and not by sight. Pastor King is the proud father to three lovely children, Eddie, Claudia, and Princess, and has called Minnesota home for over 20 years. With standing ovation, let's make welcome our conference host, Pastor Kingsley Aiesu. Amen, 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 amen. Please be seated. God is good. And all the time, amen, amen. Well, I have a very short time uh, to welcome you to Game Changers 2024. Amen. The amen is anemic. There you go, there you go, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, We thank God for his goodness. We thank God that um, it's been, what, four years? Four years. This is our fourth year. 2020, amen. We started Game Changers. Hallelujah. And uh, it was something that the Lord laid upon our heart to bring people together and uh, primarily to set them on fire. Amen. Amen to go into the world and make a difference. Amen. So I want to welcome every one of you, and uh, we want to welcome those who are joining us by way of the internet in the cyber auditorium, wherever you're connecting with us from, we are glad you joined us. Let's put our hands together for our cyber audience. Amen. All over, all over, all over. Thank you. Thank you. I just want you to know a few things, and then I will bring a speaker on for tonight. But uh, this weekend is going to be revolutionary. Amen. Amen. You, you, you didn't hear me. Amen. It's going to be revolutionary. It's going to be refreshing. And most of all, the word is going to be relevant. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so Game Changers, what is Game Changers? Game Changers, and this is from the dictionary, it's an event, idea, or procedure that have effects a significant shift in the current manner of doing or thinking about something. Amen. So, for example, an athlete or a, a, a play for a game is set in motion and, and that suddenly changes the outcome of a game. Amen. Or a contest. Or say a person or a thing. Uh, So let's say it's a person or a thing who dramatically shows up and changes the the, 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 the course of the game. All right. So, So this is, we are talking about the game of life. Amen. We are talking about the game of life. So when we are done with you this weekend, you go to your workplace and you change something. Amen. Amen. You walk into your family and you change something. But it's a thing that dramatically changes the course, the strategy, or the character of something. And so I want you to think about this as we go through this this, this, uh, weekend. So, So game changer, therefore, is someone or something that, that can spark a new concept inspire the desire for or the acceptance of or change or create the change itself. Amen. So you can be the agent of change or you create the change yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we start talking about, you know, 
uh, somebody has their job and they are firing and firing, why don't we start our own jobs and so nobody fires us? <laughs> Some of you get it tomorrow. But this is what I want to leave with you tonight. I have about 30 seconds. Listen. I want to encourage you that whatever you do, stay in the game. Because you cannot effect any change when you are not in the game. Hello? You cannot change anything without a staying power. Hallelujah. You cannot change the game if you are not in the game. Those of you who love soccer, who is the... the is it still Messi or somebody else? Christian Ronaldo. Uh-uh. <laughs> Neymar. No, Neymar is dead. LeBron James is basketball. Mbappe. Yeah, I think I'll give... I don't <laughs> but I remember many years ago when Messi used to play for Barcelona. Sometimes they sit him down. For the first 45 minutes or so. And when the game is not going in the favor of Barcelona, they bring him in. And the moment he steps on the field, something changes. He changes the game. That is what we want you to become. But you cannot quit. If you want to change the game, you can't quit. Are you hearing me, somebody? Look at yourself and say, I cannot quit. You see, listen, the truth of the matter is that as you go on, as a leader, as you go on trying to make a change, there is going to come a time when there will be the edge to quit. Listen, truth be told, Pastor Eno, truth, some of you may, but truth be told, every champion has felt it. Every president has felt it. Every king has felt it. Every lion has felt it. Every winner has felt it. What am I talking about? Every soldier has felt it at one point or time. Every victorious person has felt it. I'm talking about the edge to quit. The edge to give up. The edge to throw in the towel. Don't give up on your dream. No, you didn't hear me. Don't give up on your dream. I don't care if you don't have the money. You don't have the help. You don't have the family support. You don't have uh, 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 friends to support you. You don't have people to encourage you. Don't you give up your dream. Because you cannot make that change until you stay in there. Don't give up. Look at your neighbor and say, don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Come on, somebody. Don't you give up. Listen, it may take you as twice as long. You may have to take that class again. You may have to read as fast. You may, listen, you may not be as fast as they are. You may not have as much as they are. But don't you ever quit on yourself. Because God is not going to quit on you. Somebody say, I will not quit. I will not quit. Listen, in case you haven't figured out, I came to announce to somebody, you do make a difference. You do make a difference. Don't you ever think that you don't qualify, that you are nobody. You do make a difference. You do. I said to somebody, you do make a difference. Come on. No, 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 no. I, I, I feel like I'm here by myself. You do make a difference. As weak as you are, you do make a difference. As tired as you may be, you do make a difference. As many mistakes as you may have committed, you do make a difference. Come on, somebody. There is something. Oh. There is something this generation will lose if you are not here. This generation will miss something if you are not here. You do make a difference. I said you do make a difference. So keep on keeping on. Keep going. It is, listen, it is the spirit of those who want to make a difference. It is the spirit of a game changer. Am I talking to somebody? Am I, come on somebody help me. Come hell or high water. Hang in there. Do the best with what you got. That is who we are. We don't give up. We don't quit. I, listen, I wouldn't lie to you. Let me say this and I'll get out of your way. Is that thing working correct? It has been 15 for a long time. <laughs> it's not giving up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't lie to you. Bishop, I feel like, I, yes, I feel like going on. But I have seen days that I did not want to get out of bed. I have seen days that I didn't even want to put on clothes. I didn't even want to get out of bed and brush my teeth. I'm telling you. I have seen days so dark I just wanted to keep driving and I didn't care where I ended. I have seen days. 
I lost a lot of strength. I lost a lot of courage. I lost a lot of time. I lost a lot of money. I lost a lot of friends. People betrayed me. Listen to me. Broke, but I was believing. Lonely, but I was believing. Betrayed, but I was believing. If you lose your job, keep on believing. If you lose a spouse, keep on believing. If Listen, if you bury a child, you better keep on the faith. If you have to downsize, keep on the faith. If you have to move in and live with your mama again, keep the faith. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you are driving a Mercedes, but when it comes to a point where you have to catch the bus, catch the bus and still believe and keep the faith. Am I talking to somebody? If you are going to, if you are dealing with some health changer, still believe. Hallelujah. I am done. Listen to me. He said, Brother, what are you doing? This is what game changers do. We don't quit, we don't give up. Because until you have a staying strength and spirit in you, there's going to give, listen, the devil will give you a thousand and one reasons to quit. And one thing I can assure you for a fact, if you quit, you will never change anything. So look at your neighbor and say, I'm not a quitter. Come on, say it like a believer, I'm not a quitter. Because quitters don't win. And winners don't quit. Lift up your right hand and say after me, I'm a game changer. I am here at such a time as this to make a difference. So I cannot quit because my generation needs me. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We are going to hear the word of the Lord and uh, servant for this season. Amen. Before he comes on, Apostle Cage and Lady Cage just walked in. Let's appreciate them. Apostle Cage. <laughs> tomorrow we are going to hear from him uh, you, you don't want to miss it if you have any plans to be sick postpone it in Jesus name, <laughs> hallelujah you don't want to miss it, amen so, so it's refuge church right and refuge ministries so we have two refugees here not refugees but refugees <laughs> not refugees <laughs> Hallelujah. Tonight, we are blessed with one of the finest, and uh, we'll introduce him better tomorrow because we want to bring him on and give him as much time uh, as possible to minister to us. But uh, for those of you who are members of Christ Cup Nine Chapel, he really doesn't need an introduction. Amen. Bishop Ponya has been a blessing to us, and uh, um, as part of his profile, uh, he doesn't want us to, you know, say everything, but um, he, 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 he uh, answered the call in 1989. Some of you were not even born. <laughs> and he founded Go Fetch Them Ministry International, a beacon of charismatic revival in Togo, West Africa. You know what is interesting about uh, uh, Bishop Nya? Bishop Nya is actually a Nigerian that God sent on a missionary to Togo. And if you see what the Lord has done through him in Togo, you will know that God can do anything. Amen. God can do anything. Hallelujah. No, your clap is so weak. Hallelujah. And uh, like I said, we'll give you more details about him tomorrow, but he's the presiding bishop of Praise Chapel International Churches all over all over and tonight we are blessed to have this great man of god with us and he's going to be with us throughout this weekend and i want you to come with an expectation every day because the atmosphere of expectations they're building down from president and miracles it doesn't matter how anointed he is he will not bless you if you don't come with an empty cup so come empty every night and through this great man of god God will fill you up. Amen. You see, some of you have no idea what we are blessed with this weekend. Amen. Because to have this man with us, it's a privilege and an honor. And we are very honored. Amen. 
we are very honored. I mean, when when mommy was being ordained uh, as a bishop, and 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 I think it was Archbishop who came to do it, Archbishop uh, um, Duncan Williams. And when I saw the dignitaries that have gone to see the witness of not himself, his wife, I said, "Man, power is what." Hallelujah. But we are privileged and honored to have him. But before he comes, we want to enter into an atmosphere. Amen. And right after the psalmist, amen, the, the amen was weak. The clap is weaker. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and celebrate God in this place. He's awesome in this place. And tonight we are going somewhere. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence We want to feast at your table tonight Surrounded by your glory Because in your presence That's where we always long to be Oh, we just want to be we just want to be with you. We want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence, Lord. We want to feast at your table. And surround.
Mosheta, Imala Mosa, come on, great are you, Lord. Oh, great and mighty is our God. Tonight we declare, great are you. Everybody sing, great are you, Lord. I just great and great it to be praised, great.
lift up your hands under the Father. What an awesome presence. What an awesome word. What an awesome worship. Lift up that hands under the Lord. A man having an encounter with God. And his name was called Moses. And he become a world changer. Because the hand of God was upon his life. Tonight, God is about to open you up. To a mystery of how to start to become a world changer. I don't know why you're here. But you're not leaving this place the same way you came. I am ready. Spirit of the Lord, take the stage, take control. I lay myself at your altar for your use. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Remo Shari and Edeba, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. 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 Holy Spirit, take control. Take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Take control. Take control, take control, take control, take control, take control, take control. We are ready. Yes, yes, I don't know about you. Spirit of the Lord. Yalbosa, take the stage, take control. We lay ourselves at your altar for your use. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, I know Santa Cayata. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. I wrote out that day. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Take control, Holy Spirit. Take control, Aroma Shia Badade. Take control, take control, 
basket from heaven with fruit and stuff inside God is releasing fruitfulness spiritually physically but it's hanging up there for whosoever would stretch forth to take it you are here for an encounter this night Open up yourself. Take control. Take control. Take control. Take control. Take control. Holy Spirit, have you our way? Ramo Shate Yandosa, have you our way? Holy Spirit, have you our way? Mali alala subinde ro wasata, have you our way? Have you our way? Have you our way? Have you our way? Yes, thank you. Have your way. Somewhere under the sound of my voice, God is touching that eyes. God is touching your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. That pains in the eyes is lifting. It's living. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have your way. 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 That pains in the knees and the pains in the back. Stretch foot yourself. The Spirit of the Lord is touching you. Stretch foot that knee. Stretch foot that knee. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, take control. Take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Take control. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Take control. Take control. Take control. My great headache is leaving. Thank you, Father. You come here with the pains in the head. Touch! Holy Ghost. Touch! Spirit of the Lord. Do it again. Do it again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Take control. Take control. Take control. Yes, 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 yes. Take control. Take control. Take control. That burn in your chest. That burning, that burning is going. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise, give you praise Lord. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for that which you have started. 
You told me that no one under the sound of my voice will leave this place the same way they came. And that tonight is a night of fire and power to show forth the strength of your hands. Take control. Take control. Take control. Yes, let it drop. Let it drop. Let that tears drop. God is releasing the tension. That tension, the high blood pressure is dropping. Yes. Take control. Take control. Take control. Take control. Yes, Lord Jesus. Never again. That on sleeplessness, never again. For sometimes now you lay on your bed and you got looking for sleep and the sleep is not coming. I heard the Lord say, it's never again. The peace of God is coming in. Mm, take control. Take control. Take control. Take control. Take control. Take control. Father, I thank you. Thank you. Please don't allow this moment pass you by. Something was happening even as we were worshiping. And several of you God has touched. But some of you are still very resistive. And you are looking. But when any time you come around in the presence of God. You don't need to be a looker. You got to be a participator. And when you dive into it. You go away with a miracle. Listen to me friends. You don't even wait for the preaching or for the laying down of hands. Because it's not by might, not by power. Says the spirit of the Lord. But by my spirit. Lift up that hands once more time. Say Lord do something in my life tonight. I don't want to live here the same way I came. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Take control. Take control. Take control. Take control. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Ramo, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Yes, Lord Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. celebrate him with a clap of applause. Yes. To him, to him, to you be the glory, to you be the honor. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen, listen. Something happened in your life when we, you feel something as, as the spirit of the Lord was moving around. Something happened to you. You feel something. Can I see your hand? Something, I saw your hand. something happened to your hand. In your life, you know, within this few minutes of worship, something you sense something. I mean, now, now, what what happened to you? So, oh, from from addiction. Wow! How 
do you know? You felt it. What are you doing? Come on, put your hands together for that. You may not understand. I understood what he's saying. Because there was a time in my life I would drink until they picked me up to my mother's house. And one day I enter into the place after going for, to the church for just three weeks. And then I went back to the same place I used to go and booze. I opened the first beer. I tested it. It wasn't looking nice the way it was. I thought it was bad. I said, no, get me another bottle. They brought another one. It was the same thing. They brought another one. And something inside me began to say, that spirit of Bacchus is gone. You don't understand. No one asked me, do not drink. The Spirit of the Lord just took it away. I prayed, son, no more again. In the name of Jesus. God, God you felt something. You felt something. Now, listen, it's not about me. It's not about me. But it's about what God is about to do. And, and you don't keep it. Because that could have been an, is an encouragement for another person. Something happened to you as we were worshiping. You sensed something. I want to see your hands again. You lifted up your hands again. I see, I see you. I see, please just share it. Amen. I'm going to be here with you for three days. I don't mind. Even if I have to preach for five minutes. Amen. What, what happened? I've been having a very chronic back pain and hip pain all day and when you mention it I felt relief the first time today Hallelujah. what are you doing what are you doing celebrate the Lord when it was mentioned the Holy Ghost do it without hands being laid upon her what happened to you sis Yesterday, I've been having some burning sensations in my chest area. I went to the, um, my oncologist appointment today. I didn't want to tell them because I knew they were going to take me through a series of tests. But as we were worshiping and as um, Bishop said, some burning sensations, I rose my hand and afterwards I put my um, hand on my chest and I don't feel it anymore. Hallelujah. What an awesome God. What an awesome, we don't have time. I could have just been going. Lift up that hands and thank you. Thank you. It's just about him. It's not, it's not a person. It's about him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord Jesus. I see for somebody with a headache. You were here with, with, with heaviness in your head. I want to see that person's head. And that heaviness in your head is it's like something move out. You see, the Holy Ghost is not a liar. When he speaks, he knows what he's doing. Come on, be seated if you can, everybody. Amen. Come on, put those two hands together for Jesus. Amen. Tell somebody beside you. That you are next in turn. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, say, say, say somebody that you will not leave this place the same way you came. Amen. Wow. Thank you very much for that worship. Amen. Can you put your hands together for the group, the musical group also who sang? Amen. You guys, you guys are good. So when I watch you one to one, I send your clip one time to my, my group for them to watch. I'm just confessing now and all these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank the servant of the Lord. Amen. This is one of the... I never knew that men can be handsome, but the first time I met with Kingsley, I say, wow, this guy is handsome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so excellent. Amen. 
And every time you see him fresh, you will teach me what you've been doing. Do you say? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank God for the life of every man of God. Here, my colleagues who are here, God bless you. And women of God, you are blessed. Amen. I have, you know, forget about me. You know, I just came in from the Mother Africa. Oh, my brother also put on it. Uh, uh, because when I look at everybody, they were with all them. I said, we, we came up from this hot season. So we are trying to preserve ourselves with the cold. So forget about me that I'm not as relaxed as you are. I'm just preventing myself not to catch cold. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But what an awesome time. I came in yesterday, man. The welcoming was so awesome. I, I, I called Togo. I said, you just guys prayed for these guys. The way they treated me from the airport to the hotel. I want God to do something in their lives. Yeah. Amen. Listen to me. I'm telling you, when you take care of the man of God, you take out of him. I found out that even with a comfortable bed throughout yesterday night, I, I was just praying. I mean, the, the spirit of supplication came upon me throughout. It was about five couple with the change of, um, you know, weather. And, uh, but it was thankfulness in my heart that people can, you know, take you and honor you. Amen. Come and put your hands together for all of you. Um, I love you guys. And I'm telling you the love from my wife to you all when she came in also. That was the same, you know, love. And everyone's like, God jealous when she came back. Praise the Lord. I don't want to confess what happened, but it was from here. Amen. She, 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 in those days, I, I preached with um, iPad. She used to preach with note. But when she came back from here, I saw her with an iPad. <laughs> you changed her life. And since then, she started getting used to the iPad. God, he bless you. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to enjoy ourselves in the presence of the Lord. I was asking the Lord yesterday night, I said, God, what are you trying to say to these people? Because I didn't just want to come here and pick a message and start preaching to you. You know, sometimes when you buy in into the mind of God, he will tell you exactly what is the need of the people. And I heard the Lord saying to me, say the Lord deliverance by the strength of his hand. He said, tell them, world changes one of the mysteries most of them understand the hand of God Moses as we know about Moses the Bible says even from birth he was called but it was until he got he had an encounter with God when he saw the fire and the hand of the Lord came upon him and that changes everything. A man that was running away, a man that could not stand Pharaoh, which stood Pharaoh. Someone under the sound of my voice, after this time, every Pharaoh that has been resisting you, you are going to be a God to that Pharaoh. You are going to be a God to that problem. You are going to be a God to that situation. In the name of Jesus. And the Lord said, Upon Mount Zion there shall be a deliverance. And the children of Jacob shall possess their possession. God is about to deliver you from everything that has been standing as a stumbling block tonight. I'm not talking about tomorrow. Tonight in the name of Jesus. Why? The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. Several times in the Bible, we will keep hearing about the hand of the Lord. God's hand has a wonderful ability to do anything at all times, in any situation, and at all costs. 
And so anytime you see the hand of the Lord, go to sleep. Because that situation is going to be moved. Tonight, as the Lord said to me, he said, tell them it's a fire and power night. Because God's hand is coming down over somebody for good. Oh, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. I said, God's hand is coming upon somebody for good. Because you find out in the Bible, sometimes when God's hand come upon some people, is to judge them. But this time around, God's hand is about to come upon somebody for good. Because anytime God's hand comes, there is always restoration, deliverance, recovery. And that is a sight that you feed in. Tonight, whatsoever the canker worms, the parma worms, the caterpillar, the locust, have eaten out of somebody under the sound of my voice. God said, tell them there is going to be a restoration. There is going to be a restoration because the hand of the Lord is about to come upon someone. I will just take these few scriptures before I go in. As the Lord leads, I will preach, I will teach, I will prophesy. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. When you went, go through Exodus, the 13th verse, 13th chapter and the 14th verse, and the 14th chapter, I beg your pardon, you see most of the places God keeps saying, the hand of the Lord. I start from Exodus, the 13th chapter, the third verse. The Bible says there, and Moses said to the people, remember this day in which you went out of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of slavery. <laughs> out of the hands of addiction. Oh, I'm, I'm not surprised when God started by breaking out addiction because that is a word. And it says, for by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out of this place. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out. It wasn't by might, it wasn't by power of yours, but it's by strength of hands. So anytime you see the hands of the Lord walking in that place, he's always talking about the strength and the power of God. And in verse 14 of that same chapter, he says, so it shall be when your sons ask you in time to come saying, what is this that you shall say to him by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt and the house of bondage. By strength of hand, the Lord brought you. So anytime you see the hand of the Lord, he's always talking about the strength of God. I see this, that strength of God coming upon you today in the name of Jesus. The 16th verse in the same chapter, he echoed it again. He said, it shall be a sign on your horn and as frontlets between your eyes. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt. By the strength of the hand of God. By the strength of hand, Job 30, 21. But you have become cruel to me. With the strength of your hand, you oppose me. So the hand of the Lord is always talking about the strength of God. The strength of God. The, the very weight of God. And I see that strength coming upon you in the name of Jesus. I see that strength coming upon you in the name of Jesus. What is that problem when the weight of God come upon you? That problem cannot stay again. That situation cannot stay. But you got to recognize, you are coming to that, that it was the hand of God. Because all this he was trying to let Moses know. Moses, I want you to understand this was not by your own physical power. Because the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, 
But the Bible says they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. The hand of God pulled down the strong hands. That is why none of us can do anything without that hand of the Lord coming upon us. Every time you hear the hand of the Lord, what also comes into the, your mind should be the enablement of his power. In Acts chapter 11, 19 verse and the 20 verse verse, you see this was Barnabas and Saul at Antioch. The Bible says, now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and all that. And when you read down from verse 21, and the hand of the Lord was within him, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The enablement power of the Lord. Oh, some of us who have been going out there and say, I'm trying to win, so you need the hand of the Lord. He said, because the hand of the Lord was upon them. And when they went out of there, great people increase begins to come. People begins to follow them. And that's why I told my group, nowadays we don't do evangelical group because everyone's supposed to be an evangelist in the church and do the work of an evangelist. So I challenge everyone, every Saturday, everyone have to come and we go out there, including me. See myself in the marketplace. My son say, oh, Papa, what are you doing? I say, no, 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 we are not too big for this thing. But before we go, we need to ask for the hand of the Lord. Why? It is not because you understand the Bible. It's not because you have gone to the Bible school. It's not because you are educated. But the hand of the Lord. The Bible says in that verse 21. And it says, and the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Your grammar cannot make people to turn to the Lord. It's the hand of the Lord. Hand of the Lord. Today, you are going back with that hand of the Lord upon your life like never before. But do we see any time the hand of the Lord also is protection? You remember Jabez? Jabez came out. And one of the prayers that he prayed unto the Lord, the Bible says, and Jabez called upon God of Israel. And he said, oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand will be with me. And that you will keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested protection the hand of the Lord represent protection that you might bless me bless me indeed don't bless me halfway bless me and put me where I belong because I'm a child of God but one of the thing I needed most is that the hand may be upon me because you can bless me and I lose it when the hand of God is not upon me you can bless me and I mess it up like the prodigal son because the hand of the Lord is not there. See, protection. So anytime the hand of the Lord come, you find out that the protection. When he was talking to the children of Israel and as they were moving and he keeps saying the hand of the Lord was with them, the enemy couldn't get close because there was a protection. One other thing I found out every time the hand of the Lord is around is what I call preservation. John 10, the 27 verse and the 29 verse. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Why? They are preserved in my hand. When the hand of the Lord is upon you, it talks about preservation. Who can take you from the hand of the Lord? Who is that man who can snatch you from that mighty hand of the Lord? Who have that kind of strength to take you away from him? And so every time you hear the hand of the Lord, so he keeps talking about preservation and finally as David says 
in Psalm 89, 13 verse. He said, you have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand. And high is your right hand. Talks about authority. Authority. The hand of God. Means by which he accomplished what he wants to do. Just as you use your hands to perform your daily tasks. God's hand is his power and authority. He accomplishes his purpose by his mighty power and authority. And listen to me. You may be thinking that, oh, I'm not talking about the hand of the Lord. So we have to wait until something come out from heaven and then stretch out and I see the hand before I move. No, no, no. Listen to me, friends. He says the hand of the Lord. But was God coming down and going to meet with the children of each, with the Pharaoh? No. The hand of the Lord was the hand of Moses. God's hand is in these hands. God did not come down. Even when Moses was complaining, I am weak, I cannot do it. And he said, Heron, your brother is there. I use this weak nonsense, the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And when you come out, my hand is upon you. It's your hand, it's your legs. So don't wait until something like the hand on you. And that was why he asked him, what do you have in your hands? Not in my hands. The rod was in his hands. The Bible says, he said, I have a rod. He said, I'm going to show you one thing. That rod is more than because when I breathe upon the rod, the rod is translated from the hand of Moses to the hand of God. And he says, stretch it out, throw that one out. And when he threw what he called the rod of Moses, he said, pick it up. And he saw it, it was a snake. And watch this. People don't pick snake. Okay. But he said, go down there and pick it on this other side, the opposite side, because I want to show you it is a different ball game. When my hand is upon you, you are different. And when he picked it, and I found out from the Bible that from that time, they do no more refer to that rod as the rod of Moses again. The rod of God. But whose hand was that rod? Moses. Watch this. Jesus came in into one day. And there was no food for the people to eat. And he said, the disciple, I, I, you got to provide food for these people. And they said, we got no money. We broke. He said, go and find something. And the Bible says they went in and got these fishes and bread. And he blessed it and he broke it. Watch this. I thought he's going to go and give it to them. The Bible says he gave it to the disciples. Watch this. And as they used their hands and started giving the bread and the fishes multiply in whose hands? But that was the hand of the Lord. But whose hand does the distribution? It was the disciples. God is about to use your hands. <laughs> Uh, God is about to use that hands to be a blessing to the world. God is about to use that hands to bring deliverance, healing to your family, to your home. God is about to use that hand to be his church. The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. Friends, it's the promise from God. To extend his hand to you. Isaiah the 41 chapter and the 10 verse says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. So I am only holding you, but it's your hands that is going but you fear not, I'm going to talk to you about how to activate it. Because most of the time, the hand of the Lord is upon you. But you are there like 
Oh God, where are you? I can't do this. But God says, my hand is already on you. God, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's too much for me. No, 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 no. If you know what to do, his hands is already upon you. Oh, what you need to do, Moses, stretch forth. You remember when Moses got in into the Red Sea and he saw the enemy coming? The Bible says, they look. When you look, what do you always see anytime you look? Because what you see determines the attitude you have in that circumstances. When they look, they only look and see problem coming. But God says, change your look. And the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And then they started crying. Thank God they cried unto the Lord for, for once. And then he said, Moses, why do you yourself cry? I thought we settled this. When you drop that stick and that rod in your hand, he turned to my hands. And what are you doing? Crying. And he said, Moses, stretch forward. I come to tell the Moses under the sound of my voice it's time to stretch foot it's time to stretch foot by faith it's time to stretch foot with boldness it's time to stretch foot with courage he said fear not my hand is upon you if you read Isaiah 49 the 16th verse he said to them, see, I have inscribed on the palms. I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. When you look at your palms, what do you see? You're supposed to see the inscription. God. <laughs> Power. Strength. Preservation. Authority. It's already there in your hands. It's a promise of God for you. And one thing about the promises of God, when we were in the Sunday school in those years, they quoted that Bible, they say they offer all the promises of God is yeah and amen. So they cut short it. And then we always think that God says yeah and God say amen. And so because of that, we keep waiting. I'm waiting upon the Lord. Whereas God is saying, I'm waiting upon you to act. But that Bible place that we read that it is yea and amen. It was not like that. It says it is yea in God and amen is said through you. Please go back and check it. God say yes. And I got to put amen. If I don't put amen, it is not complete. You can have the promise. That is why for all the promise God has given to us, we are yet to say amen to it. Because we thought God have to come down and then put the amen. But he said, no, no, for all the promises, they are yeah with me. But the amen, and amen says, so shall it be. Amen is my action. Amen is my movement. Moses moved forward. And you know what happened? It was until he stepped in. That was when the river divided. Until you say yes and move forward. Some of those rivers will not give up. But after tonight by this revelation... Those rivers are giving up. The circumstances are giving up. In the name of Jesus. Quickly. What do I need to do to experience these hands of God? How can I activate it? I want to take you through the Exodus 13 and 14. You hear what we're talking. And you have been reading that Exodus 14. The Bible says, now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel that they turn and come before by Herod between Migdol and the sea opposite by, and you shall come before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered 
by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Pharaoh will never give up on you. He will always, even when he says he have let you go, he will always say in his mind, the wilderness will keep them. They will be entangled by the wilderness. The world will entangle them. That is why nowadays we don't know the difference between the Christian and the unbeliever. Because we doubt the way they doubt. We fear the way they fear. And we talk the way they talk. But if you want things to work out for you, the difference has to be clear. Because Pharaoh will never let you go like that. He will always say, I grabbed him. He will always come back. You know, it took me time to understand why God had to make the children of Israel to go a very long distance. Because the Bible says the distance to Canaan border was only 11 days. But they went for 40 days. But I found in the Bible that God says, because I was afraid they would change their heart and go back to Egypt. You see, sometimes God allows those things to happen to you. It's because it's a test. <laughs> it's a setup. Because he so much loves you. He's afraid. If you have it the way it is, everything is happening. And you say, oh, it's beautiful. My marriage is beautiful. My money is coming. My business is coming. But eventually, you begin to think, my intelligence gave it to me. My wisdom gave it to me. So sometimes he allowed uh, Pharaoh to keep hunting you so that you will know whose hands you are walking with. And so when they begin to go back, you find out that they keep saying, oh, it's a long distance. We cannot go back. But watch this. How do I activate this hand? First and foremost, there must be a relationship, a link with God. Pharaoh was coming, but Moses was staying connected. Are you connected with him? Are you listening to me? Are you connected with him? Because it takes connection to be able to collect. Except you collect, you cannot collect. He said, if you abide with me and my word abide with you, you can now ask and it shall be given to you. You need the hand of God. I can't give it to anywhere. I can't, you can't walk anywhere. They must be a connection. America, listen to me. I know we got all the things we need at any time we want. I was telling some folks. And I said, you see, what is happening here? That Because here you can easily carry your credit card. And any time you go, you want. I, at home, if I need a microphone... And um, piano, I have to fast and pray. God, but for you here, because you can just use that card and say, give it to me, I will pay back. So you don't understand how to release this stuff and cause the hand of God to work for you. So you got to stay connected. Secondly, Moses, you want my hand to walk with you? You will find out that you were holding the rod, but you came in into that place and you were crying. Where is your faith? You got to learn to walk by faith. For the hand of God to be activated in your life. Walk by faith. Mark 11, 22, 24. He say, have faith in God. Have the kind of faith God has. And what is that kind of faith? In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says God saw darkness. He saw chaos. He saw confusion, but he didn't speak confusion. He didn't speak darkness. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Romans 4, 17, he, say, he says those things which are not as if they are. Faith, speak what God say. 
Not what I feel. Not the circumstances. Yes, Pharaoh is behind me. The river is in front of me. The walls and the valley is beside me. But I got to walk by faith. And faith says if you have faith without doubt, you can say to that mountain, be thou removed. And faith says, I believe. And I speak. The hand of God is already there. But walk by faith. Number three, mind what you speak. How did God create this world? Before one of my mentors, Dr. T.L. Osborne died. I was with him about two months. After. He died after two months. I went to his house and I was sitting before he came down to be sitting with me and talking. He looked at me. He said, Paul, you are wealthy. I said, Dr. T, what do you mean? I'm African man from Togo. Poorest in Africa. And you are saying, you are wealthy. He said, Paul, you are wealthy because you can talk. He used the word talk. And then he said, come to think about it. How did God create all these things in the world, you see? He said, God, speak. God, talk. Listen to me. The hand of the Lord is upon you, but mine what come out. Because dead and life is in the power of this tongue. The creative power God has given to us. Most of the problem we are having today is the way we speak. The children of Israel said, why do you bring us here? It could have been better for us to be in Egypt. How do you love to be in slavery and in bondage? What good can come out of bondage? Oh, we don't have food. Oh, we don't have money. Oh, well, because I'm a stranger in this land, shut up. Psalm 24 verse 1. Don't you know the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to your father? Listen to me. America belongs to your father. Oh, you say, oh, I'm not an American. Who told you that the land belongs to you? It's in your mind. When the hand of the Lord is upon your life, you know the authority, the power, the protection, and all the things you needed is embedded in you. All what you need to do is to know what to speak, what to talk. He said, Paul, you are wealthy. And when he explained, I now got it. Because I was looking at myself because my ministry is in Togo. Because of that, I will not be like other people. My mentality starts start changing from that time. You know, sometimes people ask me, see me when I say, my ministry, my headquarters is in Togo. You say, Togo, no, you are, you are deceiving us. Maybe you are in one of those. No, no, no. I'm in Togo. Why? God is not a respecter of any place. God is only a respecter of those who move by faith and speak by faith and know who they are in the Lord. The other day, the Bible says, those who know their God, they will work strong and do exploit. Stop looking down on yourself. Saying, hey, because I'm, I stayed in that Togo. People come from Germany, France to invite me. Here I am here, all the way from Togo. So it's not the question of Togo. It's a question of knowing what you are carrying. I never go to a place and I leave that place without them telling me, come back. Why? Because I will not go there and begin to say, you know, je suis togolais, je ne parle pas anglais. Uh, what I say, I'm a togolese, I don't speak English. No. God has given you the spirit of power and sound mind. We are talking about world changer. It is time for us to begin to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. And begins to learn and add value to 
ourselves. Oh, come tomorrow. I believe he has something in stock for you. And I have something to deposit in your spirit. Oh, quickly, let me just go. Because when I go, I, I lose myself. I got to let you, <laughs> let you go. I am talking about what to do in order to activate this hand of the Lord. And then he told them, don't be afraid. Lift up your eyes, but don't see problem. They lift up their eyes. Vision. What kind of vision are you having? The God you are serving is a big God. He's an unlimited God. And anytime you look and you see, you see the small thing. I remember when I went to Togo, everybody was saying, how can you go to that poor country? Who will support you? Today, most of those, my friends, are saying, can I come and preach in your country? I say, come. <laughs> that same poor country. Why? I went in there with a big vision. I went in there. The government was not allowing the gospel by that time. But I went in. I didn't see the problem. I was seeing the gospel being preached everywhere. And today, the story has changed. Your story is about to change. Your story is about to change. Don't be afraid. Keep looking unto the one that says, my hand is upon your life. Hallelujah. The Bible says they cry out unto the Lord. Oh, I love this. Psalm 34, 17 and 17 says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivered them out of all their problems. Friends, no world changer. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not talking about people changing stuff who are in the world. But a believer who is not prayerful cannot get through. We got to be prayerful. The Bible says as soon as Zion begins to travel, they bring forth. They cry upon the Lord. The cry went even when they were very stubborn. Adam and fearful. But they went back to God and cried upon him. Please, friends, don't put prayer aside. Very, very important. Very, very important. You see what you see in the outside. It all happened inside there. Your prayer altar have to be increased. Especially these days. I was coming into the U.S. And they told me, tell them that this is a season of my restoration. That I'm going to, be, to restore back those things that the canker worms and the palmer worms have eaten. But before he said that in Jewel, he told them, let there be a solemn assembly. We got to learn to call upon the Lord. Because Pharaoh would not allow that restoration. And we got to fight it out with him. You got to know that the battle, you are in a battle. And it's not with ordinary flesh and blood. But it's with principalities and powers. But it says you should put on all the whole armor of the Lord. So that you can stand against the wiles of the enemy. And after doing that, you will stand. Stand in your prayer. Stand in the intercession. So the Bible says they cry out. I'm still late reading from Exodus 14 and, like, and what, what was happening there. And then he began now to give Moses instruction. One of the things I love about David, but David was a man that he always inquired from the Lord. One time situation, he was, he, he just finished the feeding the Philistines. In the same chapter, Within two verses, the Philistines came back to fight him. If it was me, I could have said, oh my God, you know, I defeated these guys. I mean, I can easily get them. But the Bible says, and he inquired again from the Lord. He inquired again. Why? It is the instructions that you receive that determine the war you win. And every instruction that you obey determines the future you create. And every war has its own instructions. 
what you use today may not be the same with tomorrow. That is why you need to always inquire, always receive instruction. I was telling a, a son yesterday, 1999, I bought a property in Togo, four plots of land, where we, and the Lord says it's time to build. And this was a man who came into the country without no money. 40 million CFR, 1999, it was a big money. And because the Lord said, I move with faith. And I look back today to that property. I went to the lawyer and the lawyer was trying to, you know, give me the word of the property. And it was going to billions with what we put in. I told somebody, do you know if I didn't do these things when I supposed to do it, I don't know what could have happened today. Because today, in the ministry, we don't have one-tenth of that amount we used to have some several years ago. You got to learn step by step to keep listening to instructions and obeying the instruction because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Things are changing and if you want to become a world changer, you have to be a one that is in tune with heaven. And listen to heaven step by step. Strategies may change. Ideas is not the same. Friends, we are looking. You know, I was looking at myself. I started learning how to use all this computer. Most of the time I would call my, my, my daughter, my baby daughter. I say, oh, what is this? I was in a university several years ago. We only have two computers for almost 40 students in engineering school. Today, every child from my, my daughter started using computer when she was in secondary school. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Turn to somebody say, catch up. Yes, 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 catch up. And the Bible says he inquired from the Lord. And that was when the Lord says, stretch foot. Do this. And then the Bible says, he asked in verse 19, the Lord causes his angels to come in and encamp around them. Friends, make sure that you understand the ministry of angels. If you want to be a world changer, if you want to be a one that you activate the hand of the Lord. Because sometimes there are some warfare you need angelic assistance. Because the forces out there, they are heavy. The Bible says, because he acts, there was a release. I see God releasing those angels to be around you. But you see this funny thing about the angels. The angels are there on assignment for you. But because you are ignorant, you have not activated them. I believe after this meeting. So you want to go out. Sometimes I go out with a traffic. I will just say, angels of God, go for it. Especially when I'm late to church. <laughs> I will release the angels. Let that light come green. Let that light come green. Angel. <laughs> and before you know, green comes. Oh no, it was the angels of God that begins to say. There was one situation that I know everywhere was blocked. And as I started praying, I released the angels of God to go in and remove the, a police guy just came in and began to say, come, 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 come. You know, started calling until I passed. I said, that was the angel. <laughs> if we want to see the hand of God, learn how to release the angel. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting something? Yes. And the Bible says, I'm going, to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to round up right now. I'm talking about how to experience this hand of the Lord. The Bible says when the angel came, he, he troubled the enemy and put confusion in them. Miss. And God himself begins to fight unseen battles for you. May God fight those battles. And finally, you saw Miriam raising up high praises and worship unto the Lord. Listen to me. 
The spirit of the Lord lives in us and that is what activates inside us the hand and the power of God in us. In the Old Testament, he was always talking about the hand. But now that hand is right inside you. Jesus says expedient that I should go so that the Holy Ghost will come. And when he comes, he will lead you. He will guide you. But you've got to understand how to walk with him. He's a person. He's a personality. But he's a gentleman. If you don't say come, he will stay where he is. You've got to learn how to make him come. You see, the work we did, I purposely did that. Though I'm like David, I like worship. I was telling my, 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 my friend, man, you are anointed. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I said, he doesn't matter. I, I like also I'm a worshiper. Because I understand the quickest way to release the spirit of the Lord. And when you begin to lift him up, he begins to draw near. He begins to draw near. Friends, the Lord wants me to tell you, his hands is already upon your life. Walk with him. Stand on your feet. Lift up your hands on the Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. 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 Holy Spirit, take control. Take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Take control. In this place, mighty God, you are awesome. In this place, Abba Father, Yahush, you are worthy of our praise. To you, our voice, we raise. You are our song in this place, mighty God. God is laying upon my heart. Sorry, please, can I, can I pray for one or two? You are here. I saw, like I said, a basket being dropped and the basket was filled with some fruit but the basket was hanging thank God you are here today it is only for us to remove out of that basket and because I know it's the basket of fruit and I feel in my spirit praying for people who are asking the Lord for fruitfulness fruitfulness is already here I want to agree with you it can be the fruitfulness from the fruit for the fruit of the womb fruitfulness in finances fruitfulness in business mm -hmm. you are worthy 
yes, yes, yes. To, to you, to you, to you our lives we raise. Yes, Father. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. There is that basket for you. Can you? You are believing God for the fruitfulness. God is here. You are awesome in this place. Spirit of the Lord. signature to be put right now in those papers that you are waiting for in the name of Jesus it is yours in Jesus name I thank you Father for fruitfulness I call it come I release it from the north from the east from the west in the name of Jesus I thank you for that which you are looking for. See the fullness. I decree and I declare that they shall come looking for you. I can know in the name of Jesus. It's your season to be restored. The years that the canker worms have eaten. Let it be put in back again in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I touch in agreement. I receive the fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Father and my God. Yes, Lord Jesus. I hear the Lord say, Is there anything difficult for me to do? For I promise and I will do it. I hear the Lord say, Hold on unto me. Hold on unto me. Don't look into the left, don't look into the right. For I will cause it to come to pass. Says the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. I give you honor. I agree with you, daughter. I release the hand of the Lord into your life like never before. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are awesome. I hear the Lord asking the question. Why are you afraid? Nothing should make you afraid. 
For I am a God that gives sound mind. And today I say unto you that which you couldn't do before, you will do it with an ease. You will do it with an ease. Step up and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, daughter. For there is nothing difficult for God to do. He has already fulfilled and do it. Take it in the name of Jesus. I prayed for you by the power of the Lord. Lord, reach out and touch. Touch! Touch! Fresh! Touch! In the name of Jesus. All that you needed is a fresh touch from the Lord. Take that fresh fire in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray to God for your hand to be mighty upon your daughter for good. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the change. I see a change coming. I see a change coming. But don't doubt me, says the Spirit of the Lord. Don't doubt me. For sometimes you ask, can it be possible? But there is nothing impossible for me to do. The change has come receive in the name of Jesus. Touch Lord with your spirit and your power. You are and let your mighty hands be upon your daughter for me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up that hands under the Father. We got to activate that fruitfulness. It's a promise from the Lord. The first promise that the Lord made to mankind. He said he blessed them. And said be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Take dominion. It's already yours. Open your mouth and I say I take it. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violence men and women take it by force. Take it right now in the name of Jesus. Take the fruitfulness in the ministry. Take the fruitfulness in that job. Thank you Father for doing it. I give you praise. I give you honor for it. Thank you Lord Jesus. Mm. My just find a prayer wherever you stand and you are sick in your body especially somebody with here under the sound of my voice lay your hands on that tummy that tummy abs absent is going lay your hands where that growth is he say he sent for this word and it's what healed them Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you are God that kept your word. You say you will set free and deliver it upon Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And you say the children of Jacob shall possess their possession. Healing is the children's bread. Yes. I prayed in agreement. With every man, every woman under the sound of my voice right now. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Let your healing virtue come. Let your Holy Spirit take control. Touch in the name of Jesus. No more again. Let the tumor disappear. Let that fibroid disappear. I thank you, Father. No more that operation. We cancel that operation, Lord. And I decree and I declare by the power of God 
that let there be a spiritual operation this night in the name of Jesus I thank you yes 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 receive it in the name of Jesus thank you for doing it Lord thank you Father for starting with us today the way you start complete what you've started in Jesus precious name can I hear you say amen? amen can I hear somebody say amen Hallelujah. Amen. Ah. We are coming back tomorrow morning, so we are going to release you. Amen. Uh, but we have to take an offering before we go, right? Oh. Amen. All right. So we'll take our offering. Please uh, give a good offering, okay? <laughs> I know some of you, you are, your offering is constant. It's like Especially for that fruitfulness that yes. the Lord is speaking about. You activate it by sowing in. Amen. Amen. Yeah, some of you, you are, you, are, you are like the constant in the key of an equation. You don't move, you don't change. Yes. Some people, the offering is $20. It doesn't matter. 20 you will get it. Once they show up at church, the 20 you are getting. But tonight, please, um, you know, sometimes people talk about things that they don't understand. You know, uh, it takes a lot of money to put something like this together. So when you are giving your offering tonight, those of you online, we encourage you uh, to help to offset the bill for this weekend. Amen. Like tomorrow, we are, we are having lunch in between uh, the sessions. And... It's free. How many of you know there's no free lunch anyway? Somebody is paying for it. It's free to you, but somebody is paying for it. So please, uh, if I were you, I will give at least $100 today. Amen. Is that a good offering to give? At least. Some of you can give five or a thousand or whatever, but at least a hundred. How many believe they can give a hundred? Say amen. Amen. I only heard the amen from here. What about those here? I'll call this, this team Uncle Mike's team. So Uncle Mike, your people, talk to them. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. No, you know, game changers thing. Eh? Um, it's just that, you know, Pastor Enoch has been generous and been kind um, to help. But Game changers is something that I fund. You see, you are all quiet. So the lunch you are going to be eating tomorrow, as you are eating, bless me. Mm -hmm. Bless me. As you are listening to the speakers, God bless Pastor King. Amen. What I'm saying is that just help me to take care of it. Amen. So we can keep doing it. Amen. So how many are ready to help me? You say, Pastor, we want to help you. Amen. I'm not going to ask you to give any amount. Just, just say you will help. Now I want to, you can't raise your hand. <laughs> All right. Let, let's pray over the offering. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give to you. It's an amazing thing that you, who need nothing, would ask us for something. Even as we heard tonight, you could have done without Moses' stake, but you always want something someone has so you can use to bless the person. So tonight as we give, let fruitfulness happen to us. Open the floodgates and make us fruitful. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right, so let's rise up. Can we sing? Can we? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's sing. Let, let's sing and, and as we... Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. If you are, if you are using um, um, 
cash app or zelle or thing that is the information uh, on the screen if you are writing a check you want to put your money in uh, that is also welcome um, let's be on our feet let's sing and give our offering amen every praise is to our god every word of worship with one our core every praise announcements um, I don't know where everybody went tonight but tomorrow <laughs> I, 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 I hear so much where is Mr. Hill I hear we have about 100 people that have registered to come tomorrow and we are starting at exactly 10 a.m. exactly 10 a.m. we are starting so about 10.05 the first speaker will be on we encourage you we are not going to wait for you we encourage you to be here on time. Um, there'll be two sessions, I believe. Pastor, am I right? Two sessions, and then lunch, and then a third session, and then we'll have breakouts. Uh, we are doing something a little bit different this year. For this year, we are having a session for young adults, just young adults. So we're having a session for all the young adults. Bring your friends, bring your, your colleagues, in your neighborhood and everybody, um, even if they haven't registered, we have made provisions so that in case we have more than the hundred, uh, we will be able to get some food and still feed those who did not register. I, I hope I'm, I'm not saying too much. Minister Hill will kick me in the head. But, <laughs> but uh, um, we, have, we, have made, we have made provisions for a little over that. So please invite the young adults, we are going to have a special session for you. Um, and, and the pastors, please, we need your workers. There'll be a session for the choir, musicians, and sound people. There's going to be a session for Ministry of Help, that is Usher's Protocol. There's going to be a session for media, the media guys. There's going to be a session for media. We're going to have another session for fellowship and and, and oh, there's going to be second chance. That's that's that. Please, the pastors and apostles, please bring your associates, your assistants, those who are helping you. Uh, we call them those leading in the second chariot. Those leading, there's going to be a session just for those in the second chariot. And uh, that, that is my favorite, my favorite uh, session. That's my favorite session. Amen. So we want you to just come and we will have that. Then, right after the uh, the lunch, you'll have one more session, and then the breakout sessions, and then after the breakout, we'll come all together again for Q&A. If you have any question during the sessions, we come in here, and all the speakers are going to be here to answer your questions. It's going to be a fun day. It's going to be a fun day. Please come and come and learn. Amen. Come and learn. It's, it's uh, going to be amazing, I promise you. 
it's going to be very informative, very informative. And it's just not going to be about theories. We're going to be giving you keys that you can go back into your community, into your church, into your organization, and make a change. Make a practical things. I promise you, practical things. I have about seven keys I'm going to give you to walk out of here. And every one of them is something you can do now to make a difference. Amen. Amen. Listen, a lot of times we go in, we, we, are, we are in life and we are trying to make money. What I have realized is that if you go into life or you live life with that idea, you never make money and majority of the time you will fail. Amen. But if you go into life determined to make a difference, to make an impact, majority of the time you get paid for it. Amen. I'm telling you. That is why a lot of you, you are pursuing money and you don't have it. But you will get some. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is good. God. And all the time, God is good. Amen. I am going to pick on somebody and I'm only doing that because I love her. Let's welcome Lady Cage to pray and close us. Amen. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this awesome time. Father, we thank you for the word that has gone forth. We thank you, God, that your hand is on this ministry, Father. Now, as we leave this place, we pray, God, that your hand is on each and every one of us, that we will arrive to our destination safely with no hurt, harm, or danger coming up on us or our cars, God, or anyone around us, Father. We thank you for this game changer conference in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this man of God that you have given this vision to. I thank you, God, that his eyes and his ears are open to receive what you have for him, God. And let nothing, let nothing come up against him in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for Pastor uh, Paul coming all the way from Toga, God, with a mighty word, God, that would change our lives forever. So we leave this place, God, but we never leave your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. Before the benediction, I want us to acknowledge Bishop and Lady Ransford. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for them. Amen. You know, he doesn't come here often. Anytime he comes, you know that the oil is flowing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his cannons upon you and give you peace on every side. Amen. Please, all the pastors, let's go through these doors into the conference room. Just go straight up into a room. Uh, 